y'all it's your girl Chantel and welcome to my channel this is life with Chantel and on this channel I do not believe that it's good for you to do life alone so I encourage you to do life with me from your home um how are y'all are y'all good how is your heart doing today uh no seriously how's your heart doing today give it a grade a b c d um f for failing um be very honest with yourself. Um, I've been doing that lately. Um, one of my coworkers and friends, Derek, he actually used to do that when we would be working. Like you would ask him how he was doing and then he would be like, you know, oh, like, uh, let's say a B minus. And so sometimes when I don't have words to say how I'm feeling, I'll just give my uh, general day a grade or at the moment a grade so yeah drop your grade below how are you doing how is your heart doing drop your grades below but it's monday so y'all know i'm here with an upload if y'all didn't know yes i record an upload on mondays that just works for me at the moment um and so i'm going to keep that format last monday i uploaded my first youtube short so it's actually doing really good um it has 300 views so i'm like what not 300 so um i'm really excited about that um if you haven't checked out my short go ahead and check that out that's what i uploaded last week but for this week i just was on instagram and um if y'all don't know your girl's a christian y'all know i love jesus and i rise with him you know um and so a lot of my feed is like uh different churches or pastors or um gospel singers and stuff like that and so one of the things that constantly pops up in my feed are you know clips from church services and stuff like that and you know Clips are good because they get people engaged. They can speak to the things that you're going through in a short amount of time. But we know sometimes we can't get all of the context. But one of the things that I, I spoke about this a couple Wednesdays ago when I had taught at my church for Bible study. Shout out to King Fellowship Christian Life Center. Um, but when I had taught, I had brought this up that there's this like popular like sermon title or even just phrase that I've been hearing in Christendom um, and even not in Christendom but just in life and it's like oh I'm in a season of isolation I'm in this season where I'm just God is isolating me and I really be having a problem with that um, and the first time I had said it publicly was when I talked but even last night, I had seen something on um, maybe like my TikTok feed that had something to do with that. And I was just like, um, let me just do a little quick little video about how I feel about this idea of isolation. One, let's just get to the nitty gritty. That's not a braid. That's the words. Um, but one, let's get to the nitty gritty. First and foremost, God has not called for us to be isolated that's not biblical i don't know where isolation of people is biblical i don't even know how in the human experience for us to be isolated is even healthy so let's get into that i had looked up um a couple scriptures like last night or maybe the day before um but just in general like god has not called us to be isolated so i wish i would stop saying that yeah, I really wish y'all stop saying that because God has not called us to be isolated. Now, in context, you know, just getting what people are like trying to convey possibly because I do that. Like I like to try to see where people are coming from. I do know that you can be separated from a certain thing, a certain group, but that does not necessarily equate to isolation. And some of y'all might be ready to tussle like, well, how is separation and isolation not the same? Maybe you can be in a classroom and you get in time out and you're separated from the group, but the group is still there. You can still hear them. Sometimes you can still see them, honey. You can still learn and glean from their experience. But when you are isolated, there is nobody around to glean from. There is nobody around to hold you accountable. There's nobody around to lift you up when you fall. There's nobody around to give you sound, godly advice or any of that. So that's why I stand firm. 
10 toes down, but I am very teachable, for sure. For sure, the people who know me know I be listening to people, even when I be like, child, I do not agree. And I also know how to disagree with respect um, with people as well. But yes, I and why do I feel so passionately about why we really need to lose this idea of isolation? Because especially in this season of my life, in a lot of people's lives around me, like people are dying life is but a vapor like it's becoming so clear and so evident and if you're looking at a clip from maybe your favorite pastor or somebody who inspires you and they're talking about you know this is your season to be isolated i i want you to kind of challenge the teaching but then also challenge how quickly you ingest things that have to do with isolation even if you feel like the whole bulk of what they were saying was still sound and still good and you could still profit from it. Okay, fine. But I'm still asking you to challenge this idea of isolation because it's just not healthy, especially for our mental health. And that's this one scripture that I had looked up, y'all. Um, and I know it's dark on this episode because I usually use natural light. Um, because this time around, I was like, honey, I'm going to go hard for my YouTube channel. I'm just going to get started. I might not have all the gear and all of that but god has given me light he gave me a desk gave me a couple of props my banner shout out to nayana and my calendar where i get this from shout out to uh, tj max but back to the scripture so there's this scripture that i had looked up and it's proverb uh proverbs 18 and 1 and um this is a book of wisdom and it says Whoever, in another version, it says the man who. So, whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. And then I feel like I'm going to read, I just want to read the other scripture that I have written down in my journal. I got this from Target. So, the other scripture I have written down in my journal says, it's Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, and it says, uh, this is the scripture that talks about not to neglect the gathering or the coming together of the brethren um, because we need to encourage each other, especially as the time nears, meaning when Jesus is about to come back, like as it's getting closer, we really should be gathering together more. We really should be connecting more. Hence why I feel like isolation is not biblical because it's saying as the return of Christ nears, we need each other. But then on the flip side, as life continues to just be life in, people are dying in ways that literally make no sense. And it really, it really is hurting me. Like it hurts my heart. Like people that I personally know, but then also like the people that you love who are affected by loss, that hurts in and of itself. But even as when we look at like, even when I look at other like podcasts that pop up on TikTok and stuff, just the negativity, um, the strife between race, honey, like, even though I'm not one of those to be like, oh, don't bring race, race ain't everything. But if we are being honest, it's tiring to have to always feel like you got to defend your pigmentation, defend the social construct, baby, because I'm not black, even though I don't necessarily know my roots honey i have an ethnic uh, ethnicity uh ethnic makeup but anywho child i'm not gonna get on that tangent but all i'm gonna say is like the world is getting crazy like every day like the polar bears they ain't got no ice child um honey the landfills honey the water people still in america don't got drinking water like people are still living in poverty people are still overdosing on drugs people are still not being able to get treatment people are still not able to get prescriptions because they cannot afford the prescription because they can't afford health care people are not being able to get the care that they need in hospitals we need each other we need each other we need each other and when it says whoever isolates himself seeks his own desires the one of the things that came up, especially for me in my life, uh, if you looked at my short last week that I posted, you know, to my channel, it was really just talking about I have been and I am in a place where I'm battling with 
feelings of depression and I'm very intentional on saying feelings of depression because I feel like in this society words that are can get very trendy and it kind of waters down and convolutes like people who are clinically diagnosed with depression I'm not clinically diagnosed with repression uh, I mean I think I said repression but I meant depression um, or anything like that but I can say that um I have experienced a lot of feelings of depression that can fit into some of those things that you see uh, when you read the full like medical, how you are diagnosed. <sighs> Needless to say, it is so easy to, to isolate yourself when you feel depressed, to isolate yourself when you're trying to manage grief, especially for the first time in your life after you have lost so many people that you're close to especially like in therapy one of the things that like has stood out or that was pointed out is that oh wow i've lost people that i know almost to like non-natural causes so mostly gun violence and or other activities and it's easy to get to a place where i had to cut my office light on. I know it's a yellow light, but I had to cut it on because it was getting too dark. But it's easy. Um, what I was saying was that it's easy, especially in grief, to get to a place where you are really just feeling like nobody understands. You know, like, don't nobody understand where I'm coming from? Like, they don't know how deeply it's hurting me, how it's affecting me. And one of the things that I used to do is, well, I would keep it to myself. I would isolate not only myself, but my emotions and how I felt. Because sometimes I felt like I didn't deserve to grieve as much as another person grieved. For example, uh, my friend Terry passed away. He was murdered. And I will never forget, like, one... Okay, here's a good example. One, at his funeral, I was by myself. Like, nobody was there with me. Even though, like, one of his best friends, like, from childhood is my best friend. Like, it was like, I, I knew people who knew him or whatever, but I was there by myself. And I wanted to be there because those are the final times that you get to say goodbye, pay your respects to the family, etc., but I will never forget when we were doing the processional, I think I had asked to ride with somebody, but they were riding with someone. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just go by myself. And I will never forget, I was in that processional line and I could not do it because I needed people. But also at the time too, I never really communicated my need for people to be there like i just needed people to be there i needed to talk i needed to just be around people but i had isolated myself in that way and even if we fast forward to like where i am now in my mental space is that especially when i'm not talking out what i'm feeling when i'm not asking for help when i'm not communicating what's going on with me that isolation when it says six is on desires it's like it's easier for me when i'm by myself to rationalize the thoughts the in, intrusive thoughts that come into my head and be like oh yeah i'm gonna act on that i'm gonna do that and i do want to put this disclaimer i have not thankfully had any thoughts of um you know being unalive but what I will say is that one of the intrusive thoughts I had was, oh, well, I'm, I just need to leave. Like, I'm not telling anybody. I just want to go, like, leave. Like, just get away. I'm not calling nobody. I'm not texting nobody. Like, I'm just going to go. And I feel like you're, sometimes our emotions contr can control us in a way that when you don't have community, and I'm not only talking about therapists, I'm talking about people who do life with you on the day-to-day. -day. When you don't have those people, one, 
who who know you enough to be like, okay, you off today. But then also those people that you can feel comfortable with because you only speak to your therapist so often a week. But those people you're comfortable enough with to say, hey, this is how I felt. And I had a person to say that to. Like, girl, like, I'm just, girl, I was kind of just feeling like I just want to go. Like, I don't, I just can't. I can't, you know. But then having people to reassure you with the word of God to tell you, girl, you was not alone. To be able to text my husband and be like, I need you to pray over these things because I'm struggling today. To be able to have a church community. To be able to have even like a digital community. Because when I shared my reel, there were a few people who reached out to me. And I can't lie, I felt overwhelmed. But I also felt proud because there was part of me that didn't even want to post about the things that I was dealing with. But it helped to say like, hey, sis, I'm there too. Or this is what happened to me. And I felt like I couldn't get what I needed. And all of this is community. And all of this is so important because we need each other. And I really just felt led to make this video because my tagline on this, y'all should, y'all gonna know it before the year is up, but it's not good to do life alone. So do life with me from your home. Even if you don't have a super close community, I think that you should begin to pray for community because some, and then also I ask that you pray for safe community because there's a scripture that says that bad company corrupts good character and so sometimes you might have people around you but they are not good for you they don't pour into you they don't encourage you they don't uplift you they don't hold you accountable and that is not necessarily good like yes i want friends who cheerlead for me but i also need some coaches i need some people to be like no why wasn't you at practice no, baby, we're not just about to keep shooting threes. I need to see that you can get in the paint, honey, and throw them bowls and get rough, honey, and hit a layup. Do you got the fundamentals? Do you got the fundamentals, Shan? Like, what do you, what you got going on? Because, girl, why wasn't you at uh, all the Wednesday night Bible studies? You know, you need the cheerleaders to be like, girl, I'm so proud of you. You got up out the bed. You brushed your teeth today. I'm so good. I'm so proud. Like, that's good enough. Some some days, that's all you can do. But then sometimes they got to be like, girl, put some clothes on. You need to put your perfume on today. Because, honey, you've been lacking. Get cute. And I just really feel like that is so important. And, you know, for me as a believer, I just feel like, there's so much stuff that sounds good, but it's not, it's not good for us. It's not good to adopt. And you know, I'm big on words and semantics, you know, potato, potato. But sometimes, no, baby, here we say, and you know, I feel like some people could say that about my name, Chantel, Chantel. No, baby, it's Shan. Big on the Shan. It's Chantel. And it matters. And it's not separation, isolation. No, it matters. We don't need to be isolated. We as human beings are not called to be, to be isolated. We thrive in community. So much so that we're attached to a human being for nine to 10 months, honey. And we come out that human. And there's a connection that 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 is in us since we're born that we need to be as soon as that baby come out, what they do? The mother wants the baby. The baby wants the mama. The baby wants the titty. The baby needs the milk. The And once, you know, the baby gets the milk, then the baby grows. Then the baby needs this attention and that attention. And do you know something? You was the baby. You was the baby. And until, and I mean, not until, but as life continues to turn, we're going to need people. We're going to need them. And so, PSA, stop telling these folks that we in a season of isolation. No, this needs to be a season of gathering because too many people are going through stuff in their mind to be isolated. Actually, too many people are isolating themselves and feeling like it's what God wants them to do 
to stay alone. And you wonder why they still is in that situation because there's another scripture that talks about um, confess your sins one to another so that you might be healed. There's healing in community. So that's my PSA, baby. Stop telling these folks that they're in a season of isolation. They might be separated from a while because you see that Jesus had to separate himself for a little minute to get his fast on, to be aligned with the Lord, to refocus his vision, to realign his mind, you know, to really do the will of the Father. But then you see at the end of his life, even in separating himself, he still had community with him that he brought some other disciples and said, let's, can y'all pray with me? I need y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need y'all to pray. And I can even see that in my own life. There have been times where I'm just like, no, Shan, you have to press through and pray. You can't keep having everybody pray for you, God. And God has told me that one time. He was like, I want to hear your words. I want to hear your voice. Like, he wanted to hear from me. That really, I was like, whoa, okay. You know, sometimes you have to press. But then there are also some times where you pull on your community and be like, hey, sis, I need you to pray for me this week. Because in and of yourself, you like, this is a hard thing and I can't do it. I need people. And that's how we're designed to be. That's how we're designed to be. We're designed to thrive in community. And like it said in Hebrew chapter 10, verse 25, especially as Jesus is nearing, which means that the world is really about to be in a ruckus before he come back. Oh, all the more you should be encouraging and uplifting and I know the song said encourage yourself, which we do need to do, but you can't encourage yourself always. Sometimes you need people. And so I hope that is a word for not only me, because I be coming on here telling y'all stuff that I be talking to myself about. And then I be sharing it with y'all. So what y'all had thought about that? Okay, well, I'm going to see y'all next week. Have y'all subscribed yet? Because we're trying to be at 200 by the end of April. I think I'm at 128 subscribers. So let's get to 200 by the end of April. All right, y'all. Be blessed. I pray in the name of Jesus that you find community, that you find safe community, and that it is all that you are looking for and that you need, especially in this moment of your life.